All right, in this video, we're going to talk about some more special terminal points along the unit circle, right? So if you haven't seen the other couple videos that I did on first just the unit circle itself and the definition of the unit circle, and then also what we mean by a terminal point, definitely check that one out. And then I also did one where we talked about some of the special terminal points, the ones that are on the positive X and, and, and negative X and, and the, the Y axis as well. So the terminal points for pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. So if you haven't seen that video either, definitely check that one out because what we'll talk about here makes more sense if, if you kind of already understood those other things that, that I did on those other videos. But here we're gonna talk about some special terminal points that are just in the first quadrant, right? So real quick review, unit circle is the circle of radius one with the center at the origin, all right? Um, the equation for the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. So if you take any point on the unit circle, take the x and y coordinates, x squared plus y squared is always gonna equal one, all right? Um, and for, for t values, remember we talked about t values in those other videos, t represents the distance we travel around the unit circle. So if I travel a full lap around the circumference of the unit circle, well, one full circumference of the unit circle is a distance of two pi, right? The, the circumference of the unit circle is two pi, so my distance around there would be this, and the terminal point for two pi is the point one zero, right? For half of the unit circle, right, halfway around, I have I travel a distance of pi, right? Because if a full unit, if a full circle is two pi, half of that is one pi, and the terminal point for for pi is negative one zero, right? If I go half of pi, right, pi over two, that takes me a quarter of the way around the full circle up here to the terminal point zero one. Right, and then the three pi over two is down here, that's three quarters of the way around the circle was zero, negative one. Right, so keep in mind that halfway around the circle is pi. Right, so my other t values where I need to know the terminal points are, are written in here, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three. Right, so what this pi over six represents, right, halfway around the circle, right, kind of the, traveling along the top half of the circle, that's a distance of pi. If I just travel this distance here, remember, when we're traveling around the unit circle, we always start on the positive x-axis. If I just travel this distance here from the positive x-axis up to there, that's one-sixth of pi, right? It's one-sixth of the way all the way across here to pi, right? So that's pi over six, right? Pi over four, that's one-fourth of pi. Or think of, that, think of that as like half of pi over two, right? If I go halfway through the first quadrant, I go halfway to pi over two, right? That gives me pi over four, right? Pi over two divided by two would be pi over four, right? So that's one-fourth of pi. If I do that four times, one, two, three, four, it takes me to one full pi, right? And then pi over three, that's one third of the way all the way around to pi, right? It's one third of pi, right? So remember, these values here represent the distance that we're traveling along the length of the unit circle, right? So pi over six is one sixth of the way all the way around, or not all the way around, but one sixth of the way over to the, the, the negative x axis. Pi over four is one fourth of the way to the negative x-axis, pi over three is one third of the way around, and pi over two is halfway around to the negative x-axis. All right, so if you keep in mind what those numbers represent, it makes it a little bit easier to remember which ones go where, because you need, need to know that pi over six is the first one you get here, pi over four is the next one, pi over three is the one after that, and then the positive y-axis is pi over two, right? So if you remember that these are fractions of pi, it makes sense that pi over six is the smallest fraction, so that's the first one you get to, then pi over four, pi over three, and then pi over two is straight up and down. All right, now, the terminal points for, for these three ones that we put in the first quadrant here, for pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, the terminal point for pi over six is root three over two, comma, one half. All right, so the x coordinate of this point on the unit circle is root three over two, the y coordinate is one half. All right, and remember, the, the, the equation for the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. So if I do root three over two squared plus one half squared, and I combine all that together and simplify it, it's gonna give me one. All right, so that's my terminal point for pi over six. For pi over four, the terminal point is root two over two comma root two over two. All right, so for the pi over four, for, the, for that t value of traveling kind of halfway through that first quadrant, the x and y coordinates are exactly the same. Right? And then for pi over three, right, going back to, for pi over four, since it's halfway through that first quadrant, if you were to draw the line y equals x, right, which remember is that, that diagonal line that goes through the origin, so that's gonna cut you know, halfway through that first quadrant. Well, the line y equals x, the y and x coordinates are the same, so it makes sense that for pi over four, halfway through that first quadrant, 
the x and y coordinates are the same. They're both the square root of 2 over 2. And again, if you do root 2 over 2 squared plus root 2 over 2 squared, it's going to end up to 1 because it's all in the unit circle. All right, so just, just trying to relate that back to something that hopefully you're already familiar with. Um, for pi over 3, the terminal point is 1 half comma root 3 over 2. All right? So you need to know those terminal points for these uh, for these t values, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and also the other ones we have up here, the pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, which I talked about on another video. Um, but you need to know all those ones that are up here uh, right now. Um, and then we can use those to figure out the terminal points for, for related points that are in each of the other three quadrants, right? Um, when we move over here to these other quadrants, they're going to have the same numbers for the terminal points. It's just when we switch quadrants, Sometimes the x becomes negative, sometimes the y becomes negative, depending on which quadrant we're in. But the numbers are going to be kind of the same, right, um, except for the signs. All right, so it's real important to know um, those terminal points, those x and y coordinates for these points over here in the first quadrant. All right, it's one of those things you just need to know what it is, and you need to be able to, to recall it to memory um, pretty much instantaneously when you need to. Now, the good news is you don't have to just memorize all these, which is it's not super difficult to memorize. If you, if you look at it long enough, you, you'll start to figure it out and remember what they are. Um, but there is a way to, to help you remember what they are without actually memorizing all of those. And we call it the trig hand. All right, so to do trig hand, and if you want to you know, pick up your hand and do that along with what I'm doing here, you use your left hand, you know, hold your left hand so that the, the palm is facing you, and your left hand represents the, the first coordinate of our unit circle, right? The pinky corresponds to the positive x-axis, the thumb corresponds pointing straight up to the positive y-axis, and then the three fingers in the middle correspond to the pi over six, the pi over four, and the pi over three, right? So there's the, the three points we need in the middle of the unit circle, and then this cor the pinky corresponds to the zero, and the thumb corresponds to the pi over two. All right, now, when you're using your trig hand to, to remember the terminal points, the, the first thing you need to remember that this is zero, this one is pi over six, this one's pi over four, this one's pi over three, this one's pi over two, right? So that, that part you need to just memorize that that's what it is. But remember, it's think about it in terms of fractions of pi. This is one sixth of pi, one fourth of pi, one third of pi, one half of pi. So you can kind of put them in order that way. You know, the smallest fraction comes first and then the biggest fraction, the one with actually the smallest denominator is the one up there. All right, so when you're using trach hand, you've always got a two in your palm, right? The two in your palm represents um, the denominators of all these fractions, right? Every single one of those fractions is something over two, which makes it easier to remember because all, all, they all have the same denominator, right? So there's a two in your hand there, in, in your palm, and then depending on which one you want to do, you, you put down the finger of which terminal point you're looking for. So if I want to find the terminal point for pi over six, that's my ring finger corresponds to pi over six. I put that finger down, and then I count, right? The number of fingers above the one I put down gives me the x coordinate, the number of fingers below the one I put down gives me the y coordinate of that terminal point, right? So for pi over six, that's, you know, this one's zero, the pinky is zero, so the next one is pi over six. Above that, I have three, right? So it's the square root of three over the two that I have in my palm. That's my x coordinate. And below that, I have the one. So it's the square root of one over two, right? But the square root of one just equals one. So my y coordinate is just one half, right? So it's always the square root of whatever number you're looking at over two. Right, but if it's a one, right, because the square root of one, if I write this out, the square root of one over two just equals one half, right, because the square root of one is one, right? So for pi over six, I have three fingers above, my x coordinate is root three over two, I have one finger below, so my y coordinate is root one over two, which is just one half, all right? So that's for pi over six, all right? Again, the, when you put down whichever finger corresponds to the, the t value you're looking for, and then Above is the x, below is the y. So for pi over 4, that's the one in the middle. That's my middle finger. I put that down. Well, above that, I have two fingers. So my x coordinate is the square root of 2 over the 2 I have in my palm. So it's root 2 over 2. Below the finger I put down is my y coordinate. Well, that's also 2. So my y coordinate is the square root of 2 over 2. All right? For pi over 3. Well, pi over 3 would be my index finger. Right, that's the one not quite up to the top of this, the, the highest one that's still in the first quadrant. So I put down my index finger. Above is my x coordinate. So that's the square root of one over two, right? There's only one finger above the one that I put down. So, and then once again, just like over here, right, the square root of one over two is one half. And then below I have three fingers. That's my y coordinate. So my y coordinate for pi over three is the square root of three over two, right? Square root of three over two. 
right? Now, this also works for, even for, for the zero and for the pi over two, like for zero, I put down my pinky, right? My pinky corresponds to zero, which for me is kind of hard to do. My fingers aren't that flexible. And above that, I have four fingers. So my X coordinate is the square root of four over two. And below that pinky, I have zero fingers. So my Y coordinate would be square root of zero over two. Well, square root of zero over two, that just equals zero. Right, what's square root of four over two? Well, the square root of four is two, and two over two equals one. All right, so for, for zero, my pinky, square root of four over two, and then zero gives me the point one zero, that's my terminal point for a T value of zero. Right, a T value of zero means we don't travel around the unit circle at all, we just stay right there on that positive X axis. Right, for pi over two, if I put down my thumb, well, I have zero fingers above that, so my X coordinate is zero, I have four below, so once again, the square root of four over two is gonna to simplify to give me the one for my y coordinate. Right? So the, the trick hand even works for those ones on the end um, to, to get your, your, uh, your terminal points. Right? So hopefully that's helpful, the, the trick hand as far as how to find the, the points you need, the terminal points on the unit circle. But you need to remember like this, is, this, this finger is pi over six. This finger is pi over four. This finger is pi over three. This one's pi over two. This one's for zero. If you can remember that, and then it's just, you know, when I put down pi over four, oh, it's root two over two, root two over two, All right? Fingers above is your X coordinate, fingers below is your Y coordinate. It's always over two. Um, and when you can simplify it, like when you get square root of one over two, you simplify the square root of one and just make it one half, All right? So that's how we can use the trig hand to evaluate some um, terminal points. And what I'm gonna do here is, is pause the recording real quick and put up maybe a quick example or two where we find terminal points for, for related points, you know, in, in the other quadrants, right? And I'll, you know, as we do all these, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going back to the trick hand. So if you didn't quite get it here, keep watching this video, watch some of the other videos that I do, and I'll keep coming back to the trick hand every time we need it. Um, so when you, when you see me do this enough times, you, you'll start to get the hang of how it works. Right, a couple quick examples here where we can use what we were just talking about, those special terminal points in the first quadrant, to find terminal points for, for other t values that are not necessarily in the first quadrant. All right, so the first one here, t equals negative pi over 4. Well, first off, it's a pi over 4 number, which means it's going to share the same numbers as the terminal point for just pi over 4. It's just that the signs might be different, right? So for, for negative, well, for, for regular pi over 4, Remember, pi over 4 is the one that's in the middle of the first quadrant, right? It's halfway to pi over 2, which means it's right in the middle of that first quadrant. And if I use my trig hand, the one in the middle, well, that's my middle finger. So my x coordinate, there's two fingers above, so that's square root of 2 over 2, right? Root 2 over 2. And then my y coordinate, the number of fingers below, is also 2, so that's root 2 over 2. All right, so there's my x and y coordinates for pi over 4 which again, I don't have to memorize the unit circle to do that. I just need to be able to use my hand. I'll say pi over four, that's the middle finger, root two over two, root two over two. Okay, I got that. Now, where is negative pi over four? Well, remember, for negative t values, you go the same distance, but in the opposite direction. For, so if this is pi over four up to there, negative pi over four is gonna be going the other way, which is gonna take us down into the fourth quadrant. It's gonna be halfway through the fourth quadrant. Right, so it's gonna share the numbers of this terminal point, but if I'm in the fourth quadrant, my x coordinate stays positive, but my y coordinate becomes negative. So it's gonna be root two over two, comma, negative root two over two. That's gonna be my terminal point for negative pi over four. All right? I go the same distance as pi over four. Pi over four is going up into the first quadrant halfway through. Negative pi over four is going down into the fourth quadrant halfway through. In the fourth quadrant, any point in the fourth quadrant has a positive x but a negative y coordinate. So I take the same numbers I have up here. Because of the symmetry of the unit circle, all I have to do is like kind of reflect that point down here. The x stays positive, but the y becomes negative, and that gives me my terminal point for negative pi over four. All right, for t equals three pi over four, same idea. Right, where is three pi over four gonna be? Well, three fourths of pi, right, think about this, instead of three pi over four, think about it as three fourths pi. That's less than pi, right? So that's gonna put it here. It's a little bit less than pi, right? Uh, 4 pi over 4 would be 1 pi, so 3 pi over 4 is going to be over here in the second quadrant. And once again, it's related to pi over 4, which has the root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. In the second quadrant, though, the x is negative and the y is positive, so for 3 pi over 2, it's going to be negative root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. 
right? I did those really quick, but I'm gonna do another video where we do some more examples of that and I explain it in more detail. So make sure you check out the other videos I'm doing on the trick.